Hallelujah. Welcome to the M to the O to the R to the E to the E to the R to the O to the M to the O to the R to the E to the R to the O to the M to the O to the R to the E to the R to the O to the M to the O to the R to the E to the R to the O to the M to the R to the O to the E to the E to the R to the E to the E to the R to the N to the E to the R to the O to the N. More backwards and forwards. What's the word? We're going to be cutting some stuff and showing you the superior way to do each of the things. Uh, what does this word mean? Tataratat. 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 Ratatat. T to the A to the T to the C to the A to the R to the R to the A to the T to the C to the A to the T. Tataratat. That's a great way to spell names. Tataratat. 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 I think that's when someone is giving you a tattoo and then they sneeze. It's not on my number here. Tataratat. Tataratat. A knock at the door. Tataratat. Tataratat. The longest palindrome in the dictionary? What? A little tatarat. A little tataratat. Give me a little tataratat on the. Tataratat. 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 Boy, that sounds good. That feels good. Feels good to say. Feels good to say when you say. It feels good to say, man. Uh, All right, dude. Let's cut some things. You do get a knife for this one. Yeah, it's a steak knife because I can use one of these. Uh, you also have all these items over there as well. So, so what, are you, what are you guys hoping for here? You're hoping that you're gonna Blood. learn how to Blood. cut stuff. Well, seriously, if you have a steak, what do you do? All right. Well, let's let's do a little face off here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stack this a little. Bit. Put this out here. You know, if I just so if I you just presented me with a steak, and I've got a fork, I don't cut my steak I mean, in the in the middle to test to see if it was done correctly. If that's what you're wondering, if I cooked it, I know I did it right. I, I start on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. I start on the edge. I and then I little. eat it, and I work my way in. Now, do you? But at a certain point, like, do you, with a, do you with change a rib your? Uh, do you change your? I, I do this. It's like, and then left hand into the mouth. I don't do the proper thing where you take it, put your knife down, and then eat with your. Even at a fine establishment, are you supposed to do that? You're supposed etiquette to... etiquette is you don't. This is like sailor st style to eat with your just eat with your left hand like this, like this, but like at a fine restaurant. You're supposed to I put it down like this. and enjoy it. I think it's a pacing thing to oh, put the knife down. I go as fast as I can. Switch hands and enjoy. Plus, you're if you're right-handed, you're going to knife it with the right hand and eat it with the right hand. But I do. I, I, eat, I do this. Have you found your? Okay. Well, I, I don't. I don't keep it in that hand because I'm not. I'm not all about it. Speed eating. Well, hold on. Are you saying? But are you doing that? You're not doing that to slow yourself down. Well, for real, you just aren't as eager. I'm not as eager. But are you doing, because there are certain circumstances, like if I'm in a, if I'm in a restaurant, like just like with my family, I'm gonna do left hand, but like, if I'm at like a banquet. You're gonna put the knife down? A banquet. This is banquet style, I'll do this. You know, you guys will kind of look around. Yeah, that, <laughs> now as far as eating a ribeye, the way that I do it, I'll take some, this like fattier, part on the edge is the nice stuff, and this in the middle is more the boring stuff. So I try to eat the boring piece first, and then... You work your way to the and edge. Then I save this edge part for last because it's the tastiest part in my, in my brain. Um, That's how I do it. I like a so ribeye, but, it. but it is my third favorite steak. I, I, I don't love steak, but ribeye is my favorite because I like the fatty parts. Uh, I used to be a ribeye man, but then I, I, I got older and suddenly I just wanted um, a lean, like uh, like a, a good, a nicely cooked filet because it's just, just meat, meat, So what's meat, your you know second what choice? New York Strip is number two. Why is that? Because it's somewhere between the two. Again, New York Strip it's has that, that little bit of fat, fat on the side. Oh, on the side. But like it's, it's well, such like a, a it's such shot. a uniform piece of meat in the middle. I don't know. Ribeyes can get too fatty sometimes, and you're like, oh well, this uh, uh, 
Uh, you keep running into things. You're surprisingly, I'm I'm team link for this steak. Yeah, you, you like a fatty steak. I, I don't, I'm not saying I don't like a fatty steak. I'm just saying it used to be my favorite, and then I fell off. I fell off of it. Let's go with a sandwich. So you've made your sandwich, and then you're like, all right, are you going to cut it? I do not cut my sandwich unless I'm making it for someone else. I, I don't cut my sandwich either. I just start. I just start eating it, but. If I make a, 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 like it's a grilled be, cheese for Shepard, I'll cut it, and I always cut it diagonal. If it's I'm gotta be I really- never use a fork, but I am right now because I have one. Really special to cut it diagonal, which, you know, to show you some love to your son. But if I were to cut a sandwich, I think I would cut it this way. I think that's what I do, I cut it this way. Why? I don't know, I just do. But, but what, what's the reason? You do too, Nicole? Mine? Do, it your way. do you have a reason? Because I don't. Can I use your reason? I just think it's more, I just like it more. It makes <laughs> more sense. It makes more sense. But this is more it's fun. I think easier, it's easier to cut it the way that Link cuts it, and if you're making a sandwich for yourself, you don't really care if it's the fancier diagonal cut. It's easier to cut for sure, but the diagonal is a more enjoyable experience because you get- No, no it's not. You get, it's not. And this is why, I've just figured it out. You get more bites with some of the crust in it when you cut it diagonal. Yeah. Whereas with this one, you can like, I could even take and do this, which well, I, I do this a lot. Well, yeah, cause you're a child. I'll take that off cause I don't like the crust. And then I've got like mostly just like the softiness. Well, I like but the But with crust. this one. And I like to stab myself in the back of the throat with the edge of the sandwich. <laughs> which was a scene in uh, Buddy System season two. Right? You can get so much more sandwich in your mouth when you go diagonal. I could eat half of this sandwich. I but you both said you didn't cut the sandwich for yourself. No, but I'm gonna start now. <laughs> but I've just determined that I'm never cutting it diagonal anymore because of this reason. Okay, well. I'm, I'm gonna That's keep, how I cut I'm a gonna sandwich. keep giving Shepard uh, diagonal cut sandwiches because it feels fancy. Now this piece of cake is already cut. <laughs> Uh, but if you were to give me just a round cake, I am at a loss. I've tried a hundred different times. You know, and I'm talking about like, somebody gives you a birthday cake that's this big around and like this tall, like one of those fancy ones, right? But just round. Just round. I'm gonna go tell you right now, it doesn't work to try to cut a slice out of it like a pie. Like that, cause then your, your, your piece of cake is that big and this deep, like that doesn't work. There's a way to You're cut You're talking a cake. about like going from the center of the circle out to the edge, radiating out? My wife's or, grandmother had a way of doing it. It was some, it was like a mathematical thing. There was always one piece that had a lot of icing on it that, in every round and what, I wanted to get that What one. that is, is when you cut the whole cake in half and then you take the one side and you start cutting down that side. So there's like. She did an iteration on that and I can't even explain it. It was, wasn't that, but it was almost what you're saying. I'm a firm believer in, uh, in radiating out, because I like this. I like the option. Of, everyone has the same slice of cake. But you, what do you what, what do you do with the kind of cake I'm talking about? This is obviously from a relatively. This cake was probably that big. So, it's but perfect. some people may want more icing, and your way gives them that. You have the people who love the icing, the people who love the cake, and there's different options. I there's like also bigger so slices and smaller slices. But if someone gave me a a, uh, a slice of cake, I would feel no need to continue slicing it. But if you were gonna eat it, do you, do you, do like you where, where do you eat it from? Cause I go like this and eat the back. You start with the icing? Yeah. Are you, is that because you're an icing man? Yeah. You like icing more than the cake? Yeah, I, I go for what I like most first. I, I go for That the, whole thing is saving the I, best for I last. I go for the cake first. Like and for a meal too, like like a full meals on your plate, you go for the thing that you like the most first. I I, I eat my plate in whole. It's pretty good. So I don't go, I don't I don't go through like oh I've got to finish this and finish this. I'm just saying in general, I enjoy things more when I'm like voraciously enjoying them versus like but metering them out. You don't like your last bite before you clear your dinner plate. Uh huh. Is not at all calculated. 30% of the time it is. Most of the time I get I get into like a fugue state when eating, Stevie. And um, <laughs> making calculations about what's gonna be last is like the last thing on my plate. But Link, you calculate your final bite, I would presume. Every bite, every single bite I've calculated. 
But your final bite, just like the ribeye, is the oh, best yeah. bite. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. I mean, if it's something that I like, if it's something I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm here just to get it down. I, like, for example, like with pancakes. Or You're as, just here to get it down? With pancakes? No, I'm saying the way that I, would, that I think about pancakes is I don't use a knife. And um, let's assume these are already sauced. There's no need to sauce them. Well, sauced? So, syrup. You put sauce on your pancakes? I mean, I guess technically a syrup is a sauce. That sounds like a hot dog is a sandwich podcast waiting to happen. Is syrup a sauce? Put it on the book. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like she was humoring you. So now that, that doesn't meet our standard. <laughs> what I what I do with pancakes is f I just fork it. I'll take I'll take the fork down and then I'll take a bite here. And this is it's kind of an adventure. And then I'll bite this. I think my question is who doesn't do what you're describing? Yeah, I don't know if this is weird. I'm just. I think I that there are people that have a knife preference. Like Cassie likes cutting things with a knife. In this instance, she would prefer to have a knife than to cut with a fork. She doesn't like the action of cutting with a fork. Yeah, in you general? got you got to apply in general, a lot of pressure. Yeah, and it's not really that pretty. Once you start getting into it, that's kind of like you're kind of hacking away at it. Are there people who just eat the pancakes from the stack down, like the top down? That would be hard to do. Sometimes I, I'll take one off and I'll just use, because it's easier to, Cassie's point, to just use the fork on one pancake. I like to eat one pancake at a time. I don't like to eat stacks. So exactly what I just said. I guess so, yeah. I said, are there some people who eat one pancake at a time and then you just basically just said, yes, this is what I do. You reminded me. Oh, that, okay. oh yeah, I do that. I don't like a stack this big. I usually, I don't like more than two pancakes uh, I do. So a, then I'll kind of. I like, like a big stack, but I make them with the. I'll, if you if I make a stack of pancakes for you this tall, it'll have fourteen pancakes, because I did the very thin pancakes. Th crepish. I go crepish. Man, you go crazy for crepish. Um, that's pretty cool though. Uh, you know what? This T-shirt that Link's got on, we want to talk about it because I wore it a while back and we didn't really talk about it that much. But this legitimately is a picture that I drew of Link in first grade. So literally right after I met him that year, we had something where we were <clears throat> drawing stuff in a book and it my mom smaller. kept the book and it has a picture of Link just like that. That's my handwriting in first grade right next to Link's face and his claw hands. And uh, yes, I, I mean, and then you're like, well, why, why'd you draw me blonde? But then you annotated it with current day red. Yeah, so the red font is, this is, these are the notes, the modern day red notes. Blonde? Okay, so Link's hair was lighter back then and I only had brown and yellow crayons to work with. I had to make a choice. My hair was blonde was, when I was a younger child. Yeah. Like a, when I started growing hair, I was a bald baby and then I had blonde hair and then, um, by the time I got into first grade, it was like just a little bit of blonde left. So grab this at mythical.com for a piece of history. Yeah. Um, well, here's half a chicken. I mean, this thing's already been sliced in half by a machine. Now the way that, I'm a dark meat man, so. You calling Nicole a machine? Did you, you hack that in half? Yes. I mean, that, that has a very machine-like quality to it. I mean, I mean the, the thigh and leg just pull right off and that's all I really care about anyway. So I think this might just become, how do you eat, with, if presented with this piece of chicken, how would you eat it? Because. I pull off the thigh and leg. I eat it all, but then I, the I, thing I, I enjoy the, the most, again, is this piece of, this breast meat. I just love the fact, this is why I'm a white meat man because this is the thing that you can do. Like you can have a piece of meat that big that has nothing in it except just meat. And I just love that being a thing. You pick that up and just start eating it? If I'm alone. <laughs> you, you like know, to be some, alone, don't you? S sometimes, uh, you, can do things you like know, that. you know, this is like a, rot we will do the rotisserie chicken, like the grocery store rotisserie chicken. It's kind of a staple. It's You're so in a convenient. A house with growing boys who want protein all the time. So there's always one in our house. And so I'm the one in the family that likes the white meat the most. And so, Sometimes late at night, I'll be like, oh, there's one of those, and I'll go in there and I'll just grab this right here and just eat the whole thing. And we make a good team, too, because I I just go for the dark meat. I'd rather not eat chicken than eat that that chicken breast. I would go without eating. But why, I just, I don't, it's, 
It's typically dry. I I would like. But it's not typically well. dry. The meat this references. Is, this yeah. isn't dry. This it is, is a little drier. It's, it's a little meat. blander. I mean, you are it's more a flavorless. Um, no, it's, it's so you're good. You're more adventurous with your meat. You like duck. I don't. I don't like duck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything else. I'm on team Brett. Just to be clear. I mean, just outside. But with everything. chicken, you're on but with team chick- chicken. With chicken, link. chicken yeah. and steak. Yeah. And the way that this inner muscle like that comes out. Again, I don't mind talking about meat as if it's that's a that that's a tender. Gross, it doesn't gross me out. That's the chicken tender right there. I'm talking millions of years of evolutionary history prepared me for this point, and I'm here for it. I'm ready. You're at, you reached your peak, man. Mm-hmm. I'm just glad to see you happy for once. It's a little dry. <laughs> um, so we got a mango here. Bring out that plate for yourself. Um, how are we gonna do this? I've never cut a mango, I don't believe. Okay, so I okay. have a mango okay. thing that my dad, first of all, he would call them mango because that's like the, that's it's, if you're speaking Spanish, that's what you call them. Anyway, okay. you stick the fork. Is your dad Mexican? No, no but, but he, grew, but he, grew he up on the, border, on the border, so he, yeah. Uh, so you stick a fork. Or a Spanish speaker of some other variety. Yeah. He, you stick a fork through the bottom of it as if it's like a like popsicle. And then you peel off the skin around it. That? And you eat it like a popsicle. Really? Yeah. What about what I just did? Chase confirmed that's what he does. So you did an avocado thing. Stevie, I'm going to try to do what your dad does with a mango. I just did avocado style. So tell me again. Okay, so stab your fork into. Well, I don't want to tell instruct you to stab anything, but you already did. You're, you're going to use it as like a popsicle stick. So stab it through the bottom. That's good. And and get like this. your hold on it. That's some good mango. Well, it's oh okay. Oh, I just stabbed my, my myself. Okay. Okay, and then peel off. Use a knife and and your fingers and peel off some of the skin. Like. Oh, don't yeah, cut, cut away, cut, cut away, cut away from yourself. For you. <laughs> the hesitation is worth is worth every penny. I know that you whittle this way towards your thumb. No, you don't. I mean, I mean, you do, but it's just it's concerning to watch you do it. I understand that, but yes, that is how you do it. You yeah. It doesn't really peel that well, though. And then you just, hmm, I don't. Look how much mango is around the mango seed. It's not very peelable. You have to use the knife. And usually, I don't believe it's a serrated knife. A what knife? Serrated. See, I can do Serrated. Serrated. You gotta keep them serrated. Oh yeah, that like a nice. You're like a roadside stand here. Oh gosh, I ain't gonna talk to nobody while I'm doing this. Don't be talking to me. I don't eat enough fruit. You it's, know, I realize nature, that every it's nature's time I'm dessert. eating it, I'm like, you know, vegetables not so great. Fruit's really good. I should eat more of that. Oh, you know, my goodness. Steve Jobs was a fruititarian for a while. Do you know about that? A fruititarian? And look how he turned out. <laughs> Dead as a doornail. Too soon. How about that? Hey, you made a, a mango sickle. Now eat it. Is this reminding you of your dad? <laughs> Stevie? Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie, go get me a taco to go with my mango. <laughs> <laughs> a taco to go with my mango. Give me some tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Did he ever get you to fetch tacos? Stephanie. Did he make that much slurping sound when he ate it? Stephanie, don't make me tell you twice. What did I tell you, girl? What did you do? <laughs> I'm like, I'm oddly proud of you for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Rhett's first grade drawing of me is on a t-shirt. Get it now at mythical.com.